now that we know how to balance, we can start looking at different types of chemical reactions. So we have three that we're going to look at, combination, decomposition, and combustion. So a combination reaction is really when you're taking two or more substances and you're forming one product. So you're taking two small things and you make one. So here you have magnesium and oxygen, you make magnesium oxide. Um, you can see you make this is a famous reaction, the second one, the, the Haber process, we'll, we'll see that again. But basically you're taking two small things, put them together to make one. Uh, a decomposition reaction is the opposite of that. You start with one big thing and you split it up into two or more substances. Um, so I could give you the name of these reactions and you, uh, the name of the compounds and then you'd have to write the reaction. I tell you what kind it is. You should be able to recognize these. I think you have to do that in, um, in one of the labs. You'll have to be able to say, you know, is it which type of reaction is this? Um, can can you write can you write the reaction? So here you have like calcium carbonate decomposing into uh, calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. Um, we'll see more of these reactions again as we um, when we start talking about stoichiometry later on in this chapter. So here's a sample problem, uh, something you should be able to do, just looking at you know combina um, combination and decomposition. So write a balanced equation for the combination. So co combination, again, you're combining two things, putting them into one, or two, two or more things. So lithium metal, which is just lithium, right? It's just li lithium solid, which is lithium is just all by itself, and fluorine gas. So fluorine is one of those special ones that is diatomic. So that's a trick, right? You have to remember which ones are the diatomics. Um, remember, horses need oats. This is need oats for clear brown eyes. All of these things, when they say fluorine gas, hydrogen gas, nitrogen, oxygen, whatever you have there, they're diatomic. Um, and so when you're doing this kind of problem, you want to make sure that you remember which ones are diatomic. You're combining them to form lithium fluoride. So basically, you're taking lithium, um, lithium, let me just write it out in words, plus fluorine gas and you're making lithium fluoride. Now this is an ionic compound, so we're going to try to build that. So lithium, I know that lithium is just lithium solid, right? And then fluorine gas is F2. Now I don't want to just stick those together and say oh, lithium fluoride is LiF2. I need to figure out what that chemical formula really looks like. So I know that lithium in an ionic compound, lithium, in an ionic compound here, lithium has a plus one charge and fluorine has a minus one charge. And if you don't remember where I'm getting that information, go back to your periodic table. Oh, you can't see it. Lithium is in group one um, and fluor the fluoride ion is in is all the way over here. So this is plus one, plus two, um, aluminum is plus three, and then working backwards, this one has a minus one, minus two, minus three charges. So make sure you remember those charges from um, chapter two. So now when lithium and fluoride get together, I know that lithium fluoride looks like just LIF, right? So I'm just crisscrossing. So all that stuff from, from uh, naming and everything from chapter two comes up again. So I wrote this equation. I have lithium plus F2 uh, it gives me LIF, and then I have to balance. So I know I have one lithium, I have two fluoride ions, uh, or two, um, two fluorine atoms. If I put a two in front of here, now I have to put a two in front of the lithium. Now I have now I should be balanced two two, and then I have two. Um, so I think the tricky part is over here. It's really easy for you just to say, oh, I'm going to combine Li, either forgetting this that this is diatomic, or just putting it all together and saying it's LiF two. When it when it's not, you still have to remember this is an ionic compound. So take the words, write the formula, and then balance. Now this one's a decomposition that occurs. So that means I'm starting with um, barium carbonate. Right, that's an ionic compound too. So I have to take that name and write the formula. And I'm making two products. I'm making barium oxide and carbon dioxide. Now carbon dioxide, you probably know that one right off the top of your head. The other ones you might have to think about. So carbonate, that was a um, polyatomic ion and barium, right? So you go back and if you didn't memorize all the charges yet, Barium is down here, it's a plus two, it's in, it's in row two, column two, so it's plus two. So barium two plus, and carbonate is CO3 with a two minus. So barium carbonate, when I crisscross that, it's just BaCO3. Barium oxide, barium again is two plus. Oxygen is two minus, right, oxide. The oxide ion is over here, it's just O2 minus. Um, and then when I crisscross that, I get BAO, 
and then carbon dioxide is just CO2. So I'm just going to bring that down there, CO2. And now you can balance, right? I have barium, I have carbon and oxygen, I have barium, carbon and oxygen, I have one barium, one barium. I have one carbon, I have one carbon. I have three oxygens, I have one, two, three oxygens. So this guy is balanced. So that's our final balanced equation there. And don't worry about the states of matter yet. We'll worry about that in, um, in chapter four. So that was an example of a combination reaction. And then this is an example of a decomposition reaction. And now we can look at combustion. So we already mentioned combustion before. Um, a key word for combustion is like burns in air. They'll say, you know, methane burns in air right through reaction. So sometimes they just give you the one organic compound and you have to figure out what the reaction looks like. Well, combustion reactions always have oxygen as the other reactant, and then the products are always carbon dioxide and water. So these are two examples of um, combustion reactions. So let's try to write one of those. So this is write the balanced equation for a reaction that occurs when ethanol, right? So ethanol, that's one of our alcohols. Maybe you remember that from chapter two. Um, it has that prefix eth, which means it has two carbons in it. So we have C2H5OH. And remember, we're separating that OH just so you know it's an alcohol. That burns in air. Burns in air means you're reacting it with oxygen and you're going to get carbon dioxide and water. And again, this is as long as you have complete combustion. If you don't have enough oxygen, then you get incomplete combustion, and then you're going to get carbon monoxide along with some carbon dioxide. We're going to assume we have complete combustion. Whenever it says burns in air or that or combustion reaction happens, assume it's complete and that you're getting carbon dioxide and water, unless they tell you otherwise. All right, so let's follow our CHO method to balance this. I have two carbons. I'm going to add two carbons over here, two in front of this carbon dioxide. I have, now how many, um, how many hydrogens do I have? I have five plus another one, I have six. So over here, I'm going to put a three to give me six hydrogens. And then I'm going to count up the oxygen. So I have two times two, four plus three is seven, but don't freak out yet. I know what you're thinking, that that's an odd number and anything I put over here is gonna give me an even number, but I already have one. I already have one um, oxygen over here. So I only need how many more? Six, right? I need six more. So how do I get this into six? I could just put a three and that will give me seven. So I'm balanced, I don't have to do anything funny. But let's just double check that we have everything we need. We have two carbons, we have six hydrogens, and then I have six, seven oxygens. And over here I have two carbons, I have four oxygens, I have six hydrogens, and now I have three oxygens, so I have seven oxygens total. So this one was a little tricky because you had oxygen already in this compound, so you have oxygen in two different places. So you'd want to add them up and make sure that they equal seven. So you basically took, I need seven, I already have one, I only need six more, so how do I turn this into six? And that's easy, I could just put a three in front.